asked to speak about decades of change. And of course, uh, decades of change is a theme that has grown familiar with me since I served portions of four different decades at Durham Tech. I certainly was thrilled in 1977 at the opportunity to join the staff at Durham Technical Institute at the time. Uh, and as was stated previously, when then President John Crumpton resigned in April of 1980, the board appointed me as interim president that following May. Seven months later, uh, I was named the th third president of Durham Technical Institute. And of course, uh, we then began immediately to focus on getting the word out about all that Durham Tech offered, getting the word out to our local citizens, and also to ensure that we improved access uh, to those offerings to prospective students, to working adults, and to others. So we began by sending out mass mailings of all course offerings to every residence in Durham and Orange County. And we also began a, a mail-in registration process um, as we did that. We developed and we then expanded off-campus and satellite centers, again in a focus to ensure that we were improving access to these wonderful course, course offerings uh, that we had available. We began providing more instructional options, including significantly expanded evening course offerings, credit, uh, credit telecourses, and of course, um, most importantly, a new weekend college, which provided working adults additional flexibility to continue working and also to, also to continue their education or their training uh, to improve their job prospects or to stay current uh, in, their, in their occupation. Durham Tech was among the first group of colleges to offer credit telecourses and it was the second community college in North Carolina to have a weekend college. Uh, I joined many Durham Tech retirees here today and of course we did have a luncheon earlier in the day. Uh, I joined these retirees and I say thank you to each of them but I also offer my sincere thanks to the many to my many esteemed faculty and staff colleagues that worked with me and that were willing to take risks and to implement new initiatives to ensure that we more effectively serve the needs of our service area, which included Durham and Orange Counties and the growing Research Triangle Park. We added credit programs and we added flexible course clusters. We later expanded our online course offerings and we began offering hybrid courses. We grew our adult and continuing education department. And in doing that, we also developed a reputation as the best community college in the state at delivering customized training for business and industry. We were a pioneer in offering English as a second language courses. We implemented competency-based competency instruction, focused on ensuring that all of our students and graduates developed those requisite job-specific competencies that they would need to excel in the workplace. We grew developmental studies from one course to a department offering a comprehensive array of multi-level courses and one that our peer institutions repeatedly voted as the best developmental, program, developmental studies program in the state. We appointed advisory committees comprised of business and industry representatives, and of course those are committees are still active today, to ensure that we were teaching the relevant and up-to-date course material and course information that our students would need to succeed in these new high-tech, high-demand jobs. As we moved on, we added and 
focused on preservation of historic properties, microelectronics technology, robotics. We started a small business institute. We focused on computer programming and network administration. We began offering a comprehensive array of high demand health technology programs. And then we added our university transfer program, which allowed us to move from Durham Technical Institute to becoming Durham Technical Community College. We worked with new international companies in the Research Triangle Park, including Mitsubishi Electric, Sumitomo Electric, and Dinamit Nobel Silicon to train new workers in areas such as wafer fabrication and optical fiber manufacturing and single crystal silicon production. And of course, new buildings were planned and constructed on Lawson Street, on Cooper Street, in northern Durham, and in Orange County. A foundation to support the college through faculty grants and student scholarships was created, as well as a mentoring program which then evolved into the current Visions program, focusing on improving minority male success. We were selected as an, as an Achieving the Dream College with Lumina Foundation funding, helping us to implement activities to increase student persistence and success. And we received and then matched Dream Keepers funds to help students when an emergency arose that could cause them to either drop out or stop out of college. And we added the middle college high school program, becoming probably the only community college in the nation to partner with three different school systems in implementing such an option for high school students. So we did indeed see decades of change as we evolved from Durham Technical Institute to Durham Technical Community College, a truly comprehensive community college. I was an employee at Durham Tech for 30 and one half years, <laughs> serving 27 years as president, a position that truly and sincerely to me was always a labor of love. It was truly a privilege and honor for me to work with such dedicated and consummate professionals that continually worked together, collaboratively, to achieve a common and shared goal, which is the mission and purpose of Durham Tech. I thank, you, I thank the uh, college administration for inviting me to be here today.